double bar graph and probability. In this module, you will learn about use of bar graph using a scale, double bar graph, chance and probability. We have learned how information collected can be arranged in a frequency distribution table and then put into a visual representation in the form of pictograph and bar graph. By looking at the bar graph, we can get information such as the mode is the longest bar if bar represent the frequency. That is, a bar graph is a representation of numbers using bars of uniform width and the length of the bars depend upon the frequency and the scale you have chosen. For example, in a bar graph where numbers in units are to be shown, the graph represents one unit length for one observation. And if it has to show numbers in tens or hundreds, one unit length can represent 10 or 100 observations. Let us learn how to use this scaling with an example. 500 people were asked about their qualification. The following was the result. Now, choose a suitable scale. Start the scale at zero. The greatest value in the data is 230. So end the scale at a value greater than 230, such as 300. Use equal divisions along the axis, such as increments of 50. You know that all the bars would lie between 0 and 300. We choose the scale such that the length between 0 and 300 is neither too long nor too small. Here we can take one unit for 50 people. Now draw the graph. From the graph we conclude that people with graduate degree are more, while postgraduate number is very less. Similarly, as per the given data, you can choose the scale in a convenient way that the graph appears simple and clear to understand. If we have two collections of data and need to compare those, we need two graphs, right? But it would become difficult to compare them by looking at them one after the other. So for such case, there is another method of representation of graph called as double bar graph. Let us learn how to use double bar graph. Suppose a teacher wants to compare the marks of five students together with their first and second term marks to get the information about their performance term-wise. In a particular subject, she uses a double bar graph. For that, first, she tabulates the marks, then makes the markings of bars of first term and second term for each student in the same graph. From this graph, she can easily get information about the performances, such as John, Smith and Lena have improved their performance, while Mary and Maria have lagged a little than their previous term. Similarly, such data can be put together in double graphs to get much other information related to it. Example, what can you infer from this double bar graph with data of boys and girls chosen for science exhibition at state level? We can interpret that number of boys selected from each city were more than girls except from Hyderabad which had equal number of boys and girls. Often, we say these words such as, there is no chance of India winning today, or there is no chance of raining today. Let us try and understand these terms a bit more. Consider the statements, the sun coming up from the west, an elephant of 10 cm height. If you take a cube of larger volume, its side will also be larger. If you burn a candle, its size will decrease. India winning the next test series. If we look at these statements, the first and second case seems impossible, while case 3 and case 4 are certain it will be true. But for the fifth case, we can say that both possible 
may win or not. Similarly, if you toss a coin, you will either get heads or tails. The chance of getting head or tail is 50-50, right? If you toss the coin 100 times, you see that there is no certain pattern in which head or tail occurs. It is just a matter of chance that in one particular throw, you get either of these. Similarly, if you toss a dice while playing a game like Snake and Ladder or Ludo, there is a chance of coming 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in any pattern if you toss for 100 times. Probability means how likely something is to happen. As we saw while tossing a coin, we get either heads or tails. And for rolling a dice, we can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. We also know from experience that for a coin, head or tail is equally likely to be obtained. We say that the probability of getting head or tail is equal and is half for each. Similarly, for a dice, possibility of getting either of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 is equal. That is, for a dice, there are 6 equally likely possible outcomes. We say each of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 has 1 sixth probability. Events that have many possibilities can have probability between 0 and 1. Those which have no chance of happening have probability 0 and those that are bound to happen have probability 1. Let us see an example for it on probability scale. Here an event such as sun rises is a certain event, so its probability is 1. Rolling 14 on a dice is impossible, so its probability is 0. And getting a heads in toss is an even chance event, so its probability is half. Let us revise all that we learned in this module on double bar graph and probability.